right, guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. My name is Ryan. This is going to be a rare opportunity to jump into a 15 stock purchase order that I've just put in on about 350 shares, totaling about $75,000. So for a retail investor or someone out there who's tuning into my message for the first time, this is a great opportunity. I don't roll these out very often to get some real insight on a real portfolio at work, a real retail investor making real investments. I'm gonna chronicle each of the 15 holdings where I uh, find value and where I'm looking to embolden my portfolio in those areas that I need a little bit of work in. So with that, we're gonna jump you into the 15 stock purchases we just made here and you guys are going to want to stick around for this because this is going to be really really awesome as we jump into the uh into the account and actually chronicle the buy orders that i've just put in uh, to welcome everybody into the uh the order screen here within my accounts this is a pretty rare insight uh, to a real retail investor's account here. Um, this is uh, indicative of, of what could be possible for you guys. And, and I always try to think about what could be of interest to the subscriber base and always trying to provide a unique insight to how I wealth build, um, you know, how, how I'm constantly looking at portfolio building. Uh, I, I typically spend more of my time doing uh, a deliberation, that of which I plan on doing a, another video on how I go about selecting the stocks or selecting the sector exposure. I think you guys will be really, really interested in um, how, how I portfolio build, how I layer up, how I deploy multiple strategies. And you can see that is indicated here, really a, a heavier weighting toward um, the top five uh, underweight sectors that I identified through my deliberation and where I needed emphasis, okay? So um, these are the buy orders here, totaling about $75,000. Uh, we'll go through on Monday. Um, this is uh, aimed at emboldening the portfolio allocation. Um, some of these are, are new holdings. Uh, actually, one of them is new holdings. The rest of them are... Um, companies that I've owned in the past here, but if you just take on a quick glance, uh, I couldn't get the whole screen on here, but the last two on the list are Duke and Southern Company. Um, but if you can see here on this list, I, I spend the majority of my time um, not talking about doggy, doggy, doggy coin or, or, or idi idi idiot stuff like that. I, I typically spend my time looking at those good quality companies out there. You know, I mean, Leggett and Platt kind of jumps out at me here as being one of those uh, established dividend kings uh, in, in investing and uh, looking to gain my exposure by investing in the best of the best. Uh, now, my underweight holdings that I identified here were number one, technology, number two, in the discretionary space, number three, in the healthcare space, number four, in financials, and number five, in the telecom communications space. So if you just peruse this list a little bit and kind of see where I've looked to fill up each of those uh, sectors with single stock, okay? Now, make no mistake, these single stock purchases are not going to be the totality of each uh, of the sector allocations. In other words, I own the uh, sector technology ETF in my passive account. I take that into consideration right and i also own a technology slice in some of those companies that uh, i need to own uh, in the single stock realm right so i've got some companies that are there intel for example uh, adobe systems uh, you know amd is a perfect example some of those that i want to own from an uh, from an active perspective in single stock um, but i own them passively in M1 Finance. So those also help in contributing to my sector exposure. Uh, in other words, how much money do I have in each of the sectors? Technology, discretionary, materials, utilities, and down the line. 
Now, the ones that I didn't mention, industrials and energy specifically, I'm overweight in, okay? So the, the, the root of my focus was not on those sectors that I was either equal weight in. I will say that the Southern Company and the Duke purchase was meant to align a little bit better my recommended allocation to utilities for my specific risk tolerance and also my insistence on owning some higher dividend utilities plays uh, in lieu of owning some of the uh, the bonds. Now, I did just for fun to earmark um, the recommended allocation and my portfolio calls for about a $42,000 allocation to uh, short, intermediate, and long-term bond exposure. Uh, I opt not to do that. Uh, my risk tolerance is a little bit higher and I, I just, I don't want to invest in bonds is the bottom line. I would rather select a, a nice dividend paying uh, ETF type of product or something that's going to get me a little bit better capital appreciation because the swings to the downside do not bother me at all. And I'm not looking to capital preserve. I'm looking to uh, capital appreciate over time. So very, very simple here. And to go down the line for you guys, there are 15 purchases here totaling about 350 shares. Total dollar amount accounted for here is about uh, 75,000. Okay. And I've given you the entire order here. So if you're interested in how I selected the shares, uh, here, some of these are adding on to existing positions like JP Morgan. I've owned the, the existing position now, and this is just an add on of 14. So the small star that you see here, these are positions that I already own. Okay. And so these uh, positions that are going in here are add on positions. But JP Morgan here in the financial space uh, and Bristol Myers Squibb, uh, kind of a starting position here, as I feel like Bristol Myers is a nice underweight position. Um, this is a is a really big move for me, and this is the one on the list that is going to be a newly established position. So fairly aggressive on BlackRock because it's the number one uh, position that I've got in financials from a bullish perspective. J.P. Morgan uh, pulls up the second place on that, and there there's really not a lot outside of that that I really want to own unless we start to get into the insurers, which I think the insurers are, they look attractive. I just wasn't interested. Uh, it, they came into my deliberation. They just did not make my final cut. Aflac uh, and Allstate, uh, as well as Prudential, always come up in my screeners very nicely, but uh, I, I just opted not to uh, not to engage in um, in positions in those. Uh, the J and J position here is a, is an, is an, on top of an existing position, so looking to just add a, a three thousand dollar bill there to the J and J position. Uh, AbbVie is fifteen shares onto an existing. Merck is twenty shares onto an existing. Uh, Leggett and Platt is an interesting play. It really is nice dividend payer. I just think the demand right now on furniture is insane. If you've tried to order any furniture offline, the demand is so high. And Leggett and Platinum is, is actually benefiting from that um, type of discretionary type of angle that they play um, with the equipment that they provide. They're a wide-ranging business. They've been around for eons. And so it's a difficult for me to fill up the discretionary space uh, whereas I've got Amazon and um, McDonald's in the space, Leggett and Platt does a good job of kind of filling that niche uh, sector, which for me, discretionary felt number two on underweight sectors for me. And that's a lot of the reason why I, I opted for this larger position in Amazon because the value was there, no doubt. The value was there, so I went ahead and enter into one of the largest positions in the portfolio uh, at five shares of Amazon. That'll go through on Monday there. Uh, and then below that, we've got a, all three of the telecommunications names with Google, Facebook, and Disney. You guys can say I'm crazy here, but, but, but not so much. I think if you sit back and understand how I deliberate over um, what goes where and why, uh, Comcast made my final list here. But I just opted not to not to take a stab at this because 
you know, the, the, the position that I already have in telecom and AT&T with over 300 shares, I'm really not that excited about it, to be honest with you. I'm a lot more interested in uh, Google at, with the YouTube exposure, as well as, of course, the ad revenue exposure in Facebook and Google. There's no two better in the business, but Facebook with Instagram being a little bit more on the cutting edge of, of content delivery as opposed to on the back end with a Comcast or an AT&T or any of your cable providers or Discovery, which I really like, but it, it's just not of interest to me right now to put large chunks of capital uh, to take up sector exposure in. And down here with Visa in the technology space, Microsoft in technology, uh, those were the two big ones that came up on the screener. I already have Apple, so the option there to just continue to monitor Apple and not embolden that position seemed to make sense right now. A um, lot more discretionary cash. This left me with about just a little over 70000 of discretionary cash after these purchases were made. But this was a strategic move to reduce the underweight sectors in each of the top five sectors that I felt like needed the most work. And these are the 15 companies that I identified found value in, in achieving my best of breed philosophy in each of the uh, sectors that I was underweight in. So with that, guys, we'll kick you back. We'll conclude the video. All right, guys, so we've come out of the account here chronicling the 15 stocks that we're looking to buy here. Hope you enjoyed the video. We, we do these uh, to provide some uh, deeper insight to how I evaluate portfolio, how I uh, identify areas within uh, the uh, portfolio that need work, some of the sectors that need a little bit of uh, addition to. Um, this should have provided you some level of insight on what I'm looking at to fill that sector exposure, uh, how I go about my deliberation, uh, and just for nothing else to show how a retail investor uh, kind of looks at wealth building and looks at investing and, and some of the perspectives and insight that I share with you guys openly on the Independent Investor channel. If you like what you've got coming through on the channel, man, you want to make sure and subscribe to the channel. You want to share the message with anybody out there that uh, is a beginning investor looking to get involved in a number of different capacities. Uh, I share those openly. I keep uh, no stone unturned with regard to how you can seek out exposure. What works for me absolutely can work for others. And I look to really foot stomp those opportunities in investing that can be scaled to the masses and duplicated because looking to share success is uh, one of those uh, niches of the channel, looking to empower one investor at a time. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.